Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We greet everyone, the praise of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the word of the Lord. I would like to invite those who can to stand out at this moment. I'm going to open our Bibles. We will also be in the projection here. The verse in the book of John. John chapter 2. We're going to read verse 7. John 2, 7. Amen. It's here in the projection. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for the blessings that you have given to us tonight. We also ask that in your word you may continue to bless your people and your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word of the Lord, it speaks about, about a wedding, about a feast, a wedding feast. And we know that every feast, especially a wedding feast, it's all prepared, prepared ahead of time. It's a moment very special, eagerly expected by the groom and bride. So there is great planning so that on the day of the feast, everything works out and that nothing may take place that may cause discomfort. And the word of the Lord says that on the third day, and it's interesting that on the third day, it is related to through the birth, life, and death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is also related to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. So it speaks about, about a time that is not of man. It speaks of, about a time of God. So on the third day, they celebrated a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And Cana of Galilee is the location or Galilee of the Gentiles or Galilee of the nations. And it says that in this place where they were celebrating this feast, there was there the mother of Jesus. And we know that it represents the people of Israel. Also, there was in this feast that was invited, Jesus was invited. And in every wedding feast, if you invite, if I invite Jesus, Jesus will be present. Because the wedding was established by God all the way back in the beginning. Remember there, the first couple, a man and a woman, a male and female, Adam and Eve. And the Lord gave the responsibility so that this couple would populate, multiply, and reign upon this earth. And there was, there was another wedding, which is the wedding of Jesus with the church. The bride is the church and the groom is Jesus. And the fruit of this wedding, the children that are going to be born of this wedding, they will also inherit a kingdom, but not a kingdom for this life, but a kingdom in eternity. And Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. So they are, it is generated for the eternity. So the Bible says, my brethren, that Jesus was there and also the disciples were there. 
the disciples represent the church of the Lord. Israel, Jesus, and the church. Why? Because in the plan, the project of God, the desire of the Lord is that everybody be, may be saved and have the knowledge of truth, and God may not choose a, a person of another, whether you are Greek or Roman, if you're Brazilian or American. Everyone has access, so everyone can participate on this feast. And the Bible says that on the third day of the feast, the celebration, the joy ran out, the wine went, ran out. It was not supposed to happen, but it happened. On the third day of the feast, there was no longer wine. So the guests, they were no longer happy. Why? Because there was, they were lacking wine. There was, there was lacking, joy was lacking in this place. And the Bible says that the mother, Jesus, she comes to Jesus and says, there's no wine. It is an interesting detail because many times in a wedding feast, sometimes comes and says, there's no wine. And I can say, there's no wine. But if I cannot resolve the problem, so why anybody said that there was no wine? If I don't have the resource, to provide the wine. And Jesus says something interesting. He said, woman, what do I have with you? Woman is related to church, the unfaithful church. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom of God, but the ones that do the will of the Lord so he said, what do I have with you? And he also says, my time has not arrived yet. Because many times, men, men, they want God to act according to their own time and their own schedule. And when you, when you pick up the Lord's Prayer, may your will be done. May your will, your will be done. So the will of the mother was that Jesus would solve the problem. But it was the time had not arrived yet. And why was the time, has the time not arrived yet? Because was, there was something lacking. So the project God and the miracle and transformation would happen in that wedding feast. And what was missing there? The Bible says that Jesus said there are six vessels there. Those water pots that were used to the purification of the Jewish people. There was supposed to be water in them, but there was no water in those water pots. And it, it is interesting that in the water pots, there was even a measure. There was, uh, there were, uh, uh, they had an, enough for two or three measures. When, when you speak about three, or two, when you speak of two, you speak about fellowship. And when you speak of three, you speak of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. And six, it was the number of the, the water pots. It speaks about men. So in the life of men, it was lacking fellowship. And it was also lacking the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it was also lacking water. And water is the Word of God. And that is a verse in the Bible that says this. In order to sanctify, having purified it with the water through the word is in Ephesians 5, 26. 
And it's interesting that each one of the measures was equivalent to 40 liters of water. So when you pick up 2 times 40 is 80. A means grace. And how about 80? Abounding grace. So when you pick up 3, 3 times 40 the have is 120, right? 12 is the disciples of Jesus. And how about 10, 120? 120 is the church. So when you pick up in the book of Acts of uh, the Apostles, I'm going to read it with the brethren on, on, on the coming of the Holy Spirit. You know how many people were gathered in the same place? Almost 120. Is there in those days? When Peter got up in the midst of the disciples, the crowd together was almost 120 people. So, the Bible speaks, my brethren, that those water pots, they were empty. It was missing the grace, was missing the fellowship in the body. And when the water pot is empty, when the recipient, there's, when the recipient, there's no water of God, there's no wine. There is, it is lacking joy. But it is important. What is important was the order that Jesus gave. So when he saw it, it was lacking joy, it was lacking fellowship. You can even say in our days, <coughs> the joy to come to the house of the Lord, the joy to glorify the Lord, the, the joy to praise the name of the Lord. It was lacking the joy of salvation. The water was for purification. So when man would enter in a determined place in, in an environment, it was part of the culture and tradition of Israel. When you participated in a wedding, you, before entering, you had to wash your hands and your feet. The hands speak about what? About work of the, of the service. You have to purify the service and also had to wash the feet. So it's purify and remove everything that prevents men from walking towards the wedding, walking in the presence of the Lord. So now that's what was lacking. And many times, man thinks that salvation is just an act. Salvation is not only an act, it's an act and a process. It's sanctified today and tomorrow. So when we pick up the book of Revelations, it says, who are those, where they came from? They are the ones who washed their garments and whited them out on the blood, on the blood of the Lamb. So the Lord gives an order, and what is the order? Are we lacking wine? So if the wine is salvation, if the wine of joy in my life has run out, it is because the water pots, they are empty. But if I fill these water pots with water, which is the word of God, there is going to be a transformation in my life. And today, all the care of the church is that the brethren may be filled or fill their lives with the Word of God. We have been studying the seven parables of the kingdom. It's related to seven letters of the revelations. And every time that we look and study, participate, we are in fellowship, seeking the revelations of the Lord. More our water pots are being filled. More the Word of God fills our lives. When we remember the, par the story of the woman of Samaria, her water pot was empty. She went out to pick up water, and she found water. And the Lord says, 
Look, the time is coming. It already is in which the true worshipers are going to praise the Lord in, in truth, in spirit and in truth, because the Lord is seeking the ones who would adore Him. So in the moment in which the water pots that were empty, was not time for the Lord to operate. But now that the water pots are, in, are full, but now that the people, they heard the word of Jesus. Now the, the people, they have done what Jesus told them to do. So the word was given, and the word says that the, the workers, the employees, they did their work. And the Bible says that their vessels they were filled to the top. They were completely filled with the word of God, with the grace of God, with the mercy of God. They were in fellowship with everything that the Lord had said and revealed to their lives. So then a miracle, a miracle happened. So when we go back to Acts of the Apostles, where it said there was about 120 people gathered in the same place, so in other words, in fellowship. The Holy Spirit came down there and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Their, all their lives were transformed at that moment. And why is that, my brethren? Because the water pots that were filled with water. So the word of God says the following. And Jesus says, Fill the water pots with water. And few, my brother and sister, went in this house, the house of the Lord today. If you still feel an empty, emptiness in your life, there's a song that says, if in your life there is an emptiness, if you cannot sing with the ones who sing to Jesus, the Lord Jesus is present in this feast. And in the place where Jesus is present, nothing is lacking. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you today accept the word of God in your life, in your heart, oh, but I already accept it. You accept it? You put it in your heart, but today it's not present in your heart. The purification is no longer present. Sanctification is no longer present. Because the water was pure for purification. So there was no water, so there was no purification. Without water, there's no sanctification. And without sanctification, no one is going to be able to see God. No one is going to be able to see the miracles that God has for you, for mine, for our lives. So the order of the Lord was fill the water pots with water. Fill with the word of God. Let it fill your interior until the top, until the brim. And as we express and with our songs and our adoration, we are singing of what our heart is full of all the grace of God, the goodness of God, of the mercy of God that God has had for our lives. And the Lord says the following, fill the water pots with water. And the Lord was showing to us in a spiritual gift, he was showing a man that entered here in need of, of a blessing from the Lord, a man that for many times he has already had an experience of God. He was born. When we accept Jesus, we are born. But then he got old. And this process of being born and getting old, being born and getting old, it is a constant in his life. Why is that? Because he's always lacking water in the water pot. There's always the absence of the word of God in his life. But when the water pots were filled, a miracle happened. And tonight, we are gathered here in this place because we have been called to participate on this wedding. We have been invited to be participants on it. And on that day, on the day in which the water was transformed into wine, it was a day in which those people had an experience of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Remember Acts of the Apostles? On that moment, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise. 
And tonight, what the Lord has for you, especially for you, my brother, the Lord wants to fill your life with the water, which is the Word of God, in order to transform this water into baptism with the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible, we say that the Bible is the Word of Life. But the Word of Life is not enough. We need to have the living Word. So the Lord God, uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit present in our life so that joy may, may remain in us. Because the desire of the Lord is that in that feast, the wedding feast, in the, everybody would receive joy. And in the absence of wine, there was no joy. And in the absence of the Holy Spirit, there is no joy. There is no, the feast of salvation does not happen. That's why Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. And they, and they fill them up to the brim. And there the Lord operated a great miracle. He manifested his glory so that his disciples would believe in him. We're going to sing now a song. And in this song, you're going to place your life before the Lord. If the wine of joy has run out, the Lord is present. He wants to hear a supplication, a prayer. Transform water in wine. Because the one in Christ is a new creature. So everything has been made new. This is the moment the Lord has called in order to drink of this better wine. In the past, people thought that, that, that they were drunk. 
But Peter said, they are not drunk. This is the fulfillment of a prophecy. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. The water pots were filled with water. And the Lord filled them with His Holy Spirit. And at this, this moment in which we are living, especially of the wedding, of the departure of the church towards eternity, our lives are being filled with the water of life, with the living water. And there is going to be a transformation. We will be transformed. We are going to be led to give continuity of this feast and this celebration in eternity. But the vessels, they need to be filled with the water of the Word of God so that there may be transformation in my body, in our bodies, in glorified bodies, so that we may be on this wedding that is being proclaimed tonight. The wedding of the Lamb that is about to come. And the Lord wants you, my brother and sister, to be in it. The joy of salvation may remain in your life. In, uh, until the day in which Hallelujah. church will stand up at this moment. Hallelujah. Holy is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to have a word of glorification to our God. What's your name, Lord? Lord, want to praise you for the hope that we have for the to go to Jerusalem to see our God face to face so that we can live with him, Lord, into giving honor, praise.
praise and glory, Lord. We praise you, Lord, because you are everything for us, Lord. You are the fount of life, Lord. You are alive. That's why we praise you, Lord. Because we need you, Lord. Our soul desires you, Lord. And it is in your, your presence that we are happy, Lord. It is in your presence that we have everything that we need in this life, Lord. And that's why we praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The Lord was showing you men. And this man, he was taking the documents that he had. And he was faced with many birth certificates. And those birth certificates, they were very old, withered. And a, a man would go to this man and give him a new birth certificate. And this birth certificate had a new seal. And what does it mean? It's a man that is present with us in the service. He has already accepted Jesus one time, twice, three times. Accept, is born and then gets old, is born and gets old. Today he's happy with salvation. In a few days he's empty once again in his life. It's, it's, it's about the water pot that's empty. He no longer has pleasure to serve the Lord and glorify the name of the Lord. But tonight, the Lord is filling the life of this individual and giving him a new birth certificate. The one who is in Christ is a new creature. Everything has been made new. Amen. The individual, there was an individual called Nicodemus. He was already old. Jesus said to him, you need to be born again. Uh, have a new identity. He already had an identity. But he said, how am I going to do this being old? Am I going to enter back into the womb of my mother and be born again? He, Jesus said, it is necessary to be born of the water and the spirit. It's a two baptism. The water and the spirit. Water is a purification. Acceptance of the word of God in your life. And then you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of the promise. And that's what the Lord is doing in the life of this man tonight, transforming his life from water to wine, a new creature. So now he's going to live the plenitude of the blessing of the Lord in his life. He's going to have the joy of salvation, to glorify the name of the Lord, to be in fellowship with the church, and to know that any moment, in the twinkling of an eye, he's going to participate in this eternal feast. Lord, we praise and thankful for yet and this other blessing and this benefit that he has given us for this other day that we have had the opportunity to be alive and to praise your holy name for your people, your church, and the ones who visit us tonight want to praise you and glorify you, Lord, and supplicate, Lord, that you continue to act and operate and hear the supplication, the plea and adoration and the intercession of each person here they have has made uh, tonight and that they their lives may be filled lord with your word with your project and that lord a miracle of transformation you may be doing in their lives in their homes in their businesses in their the marriage of each one so that they may all feel your presence and rejoice in you lord and glorify your holy name you supplicate for your blessing you also ask lord a, a week of blessings in your presence and peace and deliverances and victories we pray in the holy name of jesus in your name we say that the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god and a good and eternal father and sweet and consolations of the holy spirit be with the people of god now and forevermore amen amen the brethren may be seated the service is over and the ones who are with us following us through. A devida assistência, orar pela sua vida. Let's pray for your life and clarify any point regarding what was said tonight in this place. And the brethren also are here to give you the proper assistance to pray for your life and also to give assistance in whatever is necessary. You are welcome. We have services here every Thursday at 8 of the night, Saturdays and Sundays. 
at 7.30 of the night. And also Sunday in the morning, we have uh, Sunday schools that f for now is being transmitted from Brazil at 9 o'clock in the morning. But in a, in a short time, we are going to be have our Sunday schools here in presence. And you, my brother and sister, you are invited to participate. Amen. And to all, I wish the peace of the Lord.